morning, my friends. Welcome back to another episode of Mastering Diagnostics with yours truly, Brandon Steckler, technical editor of Motor Age Magazine. Today, I want to talk about two PIDs, parameter identifiers, that we will frequently encounter, uh, especially on the global or generic side of our PCM, utilizing our OBD2 scan tool, uh, one of which is called calculated load, and the other is called absolute load. And if you're anything like me, uh, before I knew any better, I was under the impression that both of these load PIDs, parameter identifiers, were the same thing. In other words, tomato, tomato. Now, although both of those PIDs reflect the load values placed on the engine while the vehicle is being driven, um, they are capturing information from two different angles. Um, and, and here, let me explain what's going on. When you add up all of the inputs that equate to computerized fuel injection, injector pulse width, in other words, how much fuel demand there is on the engine, um, it accounts for load. So if we take engine RPM and the displacement, in other words, the engine size, um, the throttle angle, the pressure differential between the, the atmosphere and, and the pressure inside the intake manifold, um, and the temperature of the air to infer density, and the temperature of the engine to infer how volatile or, or how uh, the ability of the, f uh, the fuel is to evaporate. In other words, how easily can it be burned in the engine? All of those PIDs equate to engine load. And engine load is truly truly what the PCM is fueling for. It is looking at all those PIDs, coming up with a load value, and delivering fuel to match the load value. So where does calculated load and absolute load come into place? It is as follows. Calculated load is based upon available engine torque capacity. And here's what I mean by that in plain English. Um, first of all, if you refer to this picture right up here, you will see the SAE definition of calculated load. But you know what? If we don't interpret that properly, we can't use it to our benefit. So I'm going to give you my definition of calculated load. Say for a moment we had an engine, any engine. When that engine is designed in a laboratory with physics and engineers, they come up with an engine breathing capability number and it accounts for temperature of the air and atmospheric pressure, in other words, elevation, all of that stuff already comes into play, um, meaning it's not a factor in this calculation any longer because it's already, already been accounted for. So anytime the throttle is at wide open throttle, the engine is breathing at its maximum ability, the engineers will refer to that as 100%. And everything the engine breeds thereon is a reflection of that 100%. In other words, if it breathes at 67% calculated load, it's achieving 67% of its maximum capable torque at that engine RPM, at that atmospheric pressure or elevation, at that throttle angle. Um, so that's calculated load. On the flip side is absolute load. Absolute load is not based upon capable torque values but based upon what we call the swept volume of the engine. And again, if you reference the SAE definition right up here, you'll see what I'm talking about. But again, I want to regurgitate it for you in a language that I understand. And hopefully you can make use of it as I have. So since it's based upon the swept volume of the engine, what we are doing is taking a, for instance, a three liter engine. And if I rotate that three liter engine around twice, in other words, one complete engine cycle, two crankshaft rotations, if I displace three liters of air, that engine is said to be 100% volumetrically efficient. Now, for instance, if I take that same naturally aspirated engine up to, let's say, 5,000 RPMs wide open throttle, I might expect to breathe 120 grams of air per second. However, it's plain to see if this vehicle was turbocharged, we might double that airflow. In other words, instead of 120 grams of air per second, we might move 240 grams of air per second. Why? Because a turbocharger force feeds an engine, makes it more volumetrically efficient. So 
What does that have to do with calculated and absolute load values? Absolute load in that scenario, turbocharged three liter engine, wide open throttle, 5,000 RPMs under boost pressure, will move 200% of its breathing capability. Why? Because we are force feeding it air. So 200% absolute load value. However, that same engine that's turbocharged is breathing the most it possibly can. Therefore, it is 100% calculated load. So you see how the two pretty much tell the same story, just in a slightly different language from a slightly different angle. So where does this come into play for us as far as diagnostics go? Absolute load reflects closely what volumetric efficiency calculators will show us. And most engines today are capable of breathing nearly 100% absolute load. Whereas turbocharged engines can breathe far more of that because they're being force fed air. So why does this come into play for us, both of these PIDs? Um, whereas calculated load will almost always show us 100% at wide open throttle, even if there is a breathing problem. When I open up that throttle and take that tremendous gulp of air, my calculated load values will tend to go to near 100%. But if I drive this vehicle down the road and I expect to see 189% absolute load, for instance, because it's turbocharged. But if I wasn't familiar with this vehicle and I saw something like 175% absolute load, that may or may not ring as suspect for me for a breathing problem. Because after all, that's still a heck of a lot of load. However, the calculated load value in that scenario would read less than 100%, maybe something like 87%, tipping, off, tipping us off to a fact that there's a breathing. So we're going to do a little bit of an experiment. I have access to a 2009 Acura RDX turbocharged 2.3 liter engine. And we're going to go on a road test and capture both calculated load and absolute values at a baseline, meaning we're not going to disturb the vehicle in any way, shape, or form. For all intents and purposes, it's operating normally. However, we are then going to disable or inhibit the turbocharger's ability to function at its best. And we're going to recapture the same data. And we are going to analyze this data live on the screen and talk about the differences. So let's head out to the car and take a look. So the name of the game is absolute load versus calculated load. And as discussed in the office, both of these parameter identifiers are a way to determine the engine's breathing capabilities. Because we got to keep in mind that an engine is an air pump. And in order for it to make the torque and horsepower production we desire, it has to move a certain amount of air. It has to inhale the air. It has to compress the air and fuel mixture. We have to have a solid combustion event, and then it has to be able to exhale the air. Now, if there's anything at all that disrupts the engine's ability to breathe, it's going to be noticed in these load calculations. Now, I'm going to set up the scan tool here. Uh, today, I just happen to be using the Bosch ADS 625X, but any global OBD2 scan tool will suffice because those pits have to be there by law. So what I'm getting at is this, we don't have to have the latest and the greatest factory enhanced scan tool or even enhanced scan tool data on our global aftermarket scanners. This is found on the global side, mandated by the government. So I'm gonna set up the scan tool to view a customized PID list and uh, I want to do that for a couple reasons. For one, I only want you to see the PIDs we're interested in. Uh, that's going to help us process, right? We don't have to stare at too many things, so it's going to be a lot easier for our minds to process what's going on. Two, it speeds up the refresh rate of the scan tool, as we've discussed many times in past videos. The faster the scan tool can process info, the more accurate the information being displayed is. Now we're gonna view these parameter identifiers in a graphical format. And again, going back to past videos, I prefer to view PIDs in this format for a couple of reasons. One, because it gives you a visual interpretation of what's happening 
throughout the duration of a road test. In other words, we are not just seeing one single point in time. We are seeing data collected over a buffer, over a period of time. Because I'm graphing multiple PIDs, I have action, reaction, comparative measure. So we're gonna look at calculated load, we're gonna look at absolute load, and we are going to look at engine RPM. And you know what? I'll throw in throttle position as well. And we are gonna look at those PIDs graphed out over time. So we're gonna go into global, OBD2 generic data. And we are going to build a customized PID list. We are going to look at engine RPM. We are going to look at absolute load. And we are gonna look at calculated load. And I'm gonna throw in throttle position. And now that these PIDs are customized, let's change them to graphs. So now that we've got our scan tool customized PID list created, we're gonna road test the vehicle. Now this first road test is gonna be a full throttle acceleration. Um, I'm gonna try and repeat this road test one other time, meaning two road tests, I'm gonna try and do them exactly the same. But here's what we're gonna do. On the first road test, we're gonna call it a baseline, meaning we are not gonna make any changes to the vehicle's performance. In other words, it's gonna work just fine. On the second road test, I'm going to inhibit this engine from breathing properly, and I want to show how it's reflected in both the absolute and calculated load values. Okay, so we performed the original road test, what we referred to as a baseline, where the vehicle um, was not tampered with in any way. In other words, it was allowed to perform normal. Um, we've captured the data, absolute load, calculated load, and both RPM and throttle position for reference of how the vehicle was being operated. And um, now we're gonna go under the hood and we are going to inhibit the turbocharge boost system. Um, I'm going to disconnect the boost control solenoid. And this, sol this solenoid is a duty cycle component. The, the more, the higher the duty cycle value created by the PCM, uh, the more turbo output, the more boost we create for the engine. So by my, me unplugging this, we are limiting the amount of turbo pressure or, or turbo output, if you will, for the engine. And we should see those numbers reflect in the absolute load values. So let's go into the hood and disable this car. So although it's not visible from camera view, right behind this panel is a solenoid that leads down to the turbocharger boost actuator. So we've unplugged the solenoid and that's going to limit the boost actuator's ability to create turbo charger boosted output. We are going to plot a line graph. Now this is the video, I'm going to pause it. This is our first road test. So what I'm going to do is take all four PIDs from our customized PID list. I'm going to change them to a graphical format. Now, I can plot this any way I want. I, I can expand it to take up more space, but I purposely want to keep it as is so we can see all four PIDs at the same time. Now, what I'm going to do is click and drag this, and I am going to reference engine RPM visually to see where our peak RPM was. So as I take this through our road test, I get to about, let's see, Looks like about 55, 5600 RPM. So let's take it frame by frame. There's 55, 55, 72. Looks like 56, 13 is our peak. Now take a look at this. This is the, again, unblemished, undisturbed, uh, normally running turbocharged 2.3 liter. Now, under wide open throttle, we've achieved an engine RPM of 5613. Now real quick, I do want to address, this is a relative throttle position, not an absolute throttle position. What I mean by that is relative throttle position, we never go to 100% of the throttle position sensor voltage, and we never go to 0% of the throttle position sensor voltage. We're always somewhere in between. So relatively speaking, we are only at 75% 
of the five volts, but this is an absolute throttle of approximately 100%. So for all intents and purposes, we are at wide open throttle, even though this is showing only 75% here. So at wide open throttle, we've achieved 5,600 RPMs. According to our calculated load, this engine is breathing what it is capable of breathing at this throttle angle, RPM, manifold pressure, and temperature. And our absolute values are, absolute load values are approximately, whoops, at peak, about 100, 175. So we are achieving what I want you to pay attention to on this unblemished road test is at wide open throttle. Um, we've achieved 174% absolute load with a calculated load of 100%. Now, let's go back and plot the latest capture. And we are looking at the same values, except this time we've created a fault in the turbocharging system. It will not achieve maximum boost. So again, I'm going to configure my graphs in the same fashion so we can make an apples to apples comparison. So once again, I'm going to grab my cursor and drag this till I achieve maximum engine RPM which in this case is about 5,800. I'll tell you, let's take it back to 5,600, back where we were before. So 5,514. Again, we are at 100% calculated load. Why? Because the engine is breathing its maximum capability at this elevation, this RPM, and this manifold pressure, engine temperature. Absolute load is showing us the engine's maximum load as far as volumetric efficiency goes at only 133%. So as you can see, both load PIDs are beneficial and they both tell a story about breathability, but they tell it from a different angle. Now I'll give you, for instance, if we were looking at this load, these load values under similar driving conditions, except the fault was not a disabled turbocharger, but in fact a restricted exhaust. Of course, we would see lower absolute load values for the same reason we see lower absolute values in this scenario. However, our calculated engine load values would drop because the engine is not breathing what it's capable of at this RPM, this elevation, in other words, barometric pressure, this throttle angle and, and engine temperature or air temperature. My friends, I want to thank you again for joining me on this episode of Mastering Diagnostics. I hope the calculated versus absolute load values in their description and how we implemented them in today's video helps you out in the long run. Again, I'm Brandon Steckler, Tech Editor of Motor Age Magazine, and I hope to see you next time on the next episode of Mastering Diagnostics. Take care.